everybody, today I just thought I'd do um, a portrait shoot with the Tamron 24-70 G2 lens. I just wanted to see what it would be like using it with portraits. So I've got my friend with me, Roxy, and she'll be my model for today, basically. So I'm using my Nikon D850 with this. Hopefully they're good. We'll see what happens. I'm going to shoot at from f2.8, and then I'll probably go up to around f4. I'll try 25 millimeters and then I'll go to 70 millimeters just to get the typical portrait shots. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, hopefully it goes well. I was thinking of using a loom cube um, and a silver umbrella reflector just to see what it would do. Then I kind of get to test it out with a bit of lighting. I just thought this would be interesting to use because it's quite a bright thing. I mean, that's, it gets really bright. So I um, thought it would be pretty cool, be an interesting thing to use. And yeah, let's just see how the portraits work with this. Yeah, so this is what we'll use. So I think. Up close it looks quite nice, so I think we'll use this, see what it looks like. Uh, I'll take a couple of shots with the Tamron, um, and hopefully it looks good. So let's just get into this. At f2.8 with the light, it's actually really sharp. So this is doing quite well, but it's mainly sharp, like above 35 millimeters. I'm gonna try at one thirtieth of a second and ISO 80. Wow, that was amazing. Okay, so we're done with doing the shoot. Uh, next thing is to go to the computer, look at the photos, and I'll kind of show you guys the differences between some of them and actually how sharp some of the f2.8 shots were. Shots are a lot sharper when I use a light, which is pretty normal in most photography in general, but it really made a difference with this. I, it just seemed like the lens focused much better when I use the light. So yeah, let's get back to the computer and we'll have a look at some of these shots. Okay, everybody, we're back at the computer now. Obviously you've seen a few of the photos already, but I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about them. This is one thing here, as you saw, in the, the from the first picture when i was shooting at around 24 millimeters at 2.8 it just seemed to be quite blurry when i checked it it turns out that it actually focused on the background the weird thing is i actually had my focus directly on her left eye it looked really strange in the back of the camera i didn't understand why and then after looking here it seems to have back focused but it seems to only do it at 24 millimeters. I forgot to check putting up the aperture. Again, I had focused on the eye to 24 millimeters again and f2.8. Anytime I shot above 24 millimeters, it worked pretty much fine. So I don't understand unless I was really, really close. But even then, I shot above 24 millimeters. I'm wondering if maybe I need the Tamron dock to adjust it because that's a possibility. There's obviously something wrong there within the factory settings. I mean like some of the photos are actually really nice, like this one was shot at 70 millimeters at f2.8 and 1 200th of a second at ISO 320. And it is really good, the eyes are definitely in focus here. So at f2.8 it does do a quite a good job and you can see it blows out the background quite nicely. The bokeh is not amazing, obviously there's a tree in the background so uh, it's a bit of spotted bokeh basically. But I am used to using bigger prime lenses for my portraits, so compared, I mean, it's close. So I just took a few different shots, slightly different angles. Um, the ones outside here with obviously with no light, but it seemed to do okay. It did a good enough job. I found that 50 millimeters actually was, I think, was the sharpest out of all the other lengths, at least without using a light. It just seemed to be really good at 50. And like this one was shot at 35 millimeters at f4. Um, so there is a lot of detail there and you can see where it falls off. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of detail in the eye. It does a really good job. Um, and I was really close to her face. So I was actually surprised how close you can actually get with this. But once getting in with the light, 
Um, obviously, I was still I was shooting at quite high ISOs so actually. This is ISO 500. Um, shot this at 46 millimeters at f 2.8, um, 200 of a second as well. But with the light, I mean, look at that. Look how sharp that is. Um, and there's a nice fall off. The bokeh is quite nice. I mean, it's it has a little bit of a bubble bokeh effect, which is interesting because that's kind of like an old school. Um, touch, but obviously these are little leaves, so it might be the reason why, but still uh, I thought that was kind of cool, it gave a little unique touch to it. These ones here was actually to show you um, with changing the aperture, so this is shot at f2.8 and then I went to f3.5, that's quite a big difference actually um, the eye is so much sharper, you can see um, like I've said before, f2.8 seems a little bit soft. I mean, it's sharp, but just going to 3.5, look look how different that is. Um, going up to f4, and everything in the face is sharp. Obviously, there's still a bit of fall off, which is nice. There's still some nice bokeh. All the details are there. It's really good. And this is even shot at ISO 1000, so I think this is really good for ISO 1000. Um, and then I went to f 6.3. Here I shot it at, um, at ISO 2000, so now you're starting to see a lot of the grain, which is fine, but I mean, most people aren't seeing the photo one to one like this, so at a distance, it looks really nice. Um, obviously, at f6.3, you're starting to get the, the background in and stuff, but it still has a nice fall off, it's still really good. Um, so it, it does quite a good job. And this one, this is at one thirtieth of a second. I was actually surprised that the lens managed to do that. That that just shows how good the VC really is. The VC on this is excellent. Um, so I was able to shoot this down at ISO 80. And that's one thing I didn't explain actually, is that it was getting pretty dark. It's uh, late in the afternoon here. The sun was just about to go down. I just wanted to kind of show a little bit more distance and stuff. As you see, when you are at a distance, things do start to get a little bit um, it, the grain shows a little bit more um, and things tend to not be as sharp at 2.8 like I said um, shooting around the 35 and just above 50 millimeter seems to work really well but once I got to 70 2.8 got really soft um, it, it looks fine there but once you zoom in it it is quite soft um, so it seems like 50 is actually the sweet spot of the lens and I think that's quite common for most 24-70mm uh, to 70 millimeter lenses. This one was actually a good one at 70mm, but I actually got quite close to her face here, so I was able to um, focus just on that part of her face. And it, it does quite well when, when you're just getting that one spot. Um, but like this one, um, when I was trying to get in all of her body and her face and stuff, um, it seems to be really soft there, but once you're close and getting just certain features, then it's fine. Uh, but even then, still, I would say if like around 50, 55 and below is actually much better. So yeah, anyway, so I hope you guys actually enjoyed this. Um, I know it was a little, a bit of a simple video, but I just wanted to see what the Tamron would be like with shooting portraits. Um, and I was quite surprised, and yeah, it does quite a good job. So I think if anyone is out there wanting it for this, then I think you'd be okay using it for this, actually. It's quite good, but you just have to learn the lens, basically, and, and find the points that seem to work better. Thank you guys for watching, and subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Are you still filming? Seriously, what are you looking at?